Proudly we hail. And season's greetings to everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. We're especially pleased to present our Christmas program, an original play entitled A Story for Christmas. And in those days of all who governed the vassal states of mighty Rome, none was more feared or hated than Herod, who ruled over the broken and oppressed land of Judea. Cunning was the flame that burned in his heart, and cruelty the fuel that fed its insane designs. Devoid of all charity and compassion, Herod's overripe hulk was a perfect vessel of evil, and all the land from Dan to Bathsheba was held under his mailed yoke. His spies were many, and those who dared preach or cite insurrection were soon ferreted out and put to devilish and inhuman torture. And so it was that Jairus of Ptolemaeus and his young brother Ethan were brought before Herod the king. So these are the rogues. Even so, noble Herod. Carrion, meat for the jackals. So now, Jairus of Ptolemaeus... You see the misfortune your plotting has begotten you. A man can but die for what he believes. Silence, you pig spawn. Cannon the whip. Hold. The younger one. Why does he look so? Have you addled his wits? He is sightless, gracious master. What? You put out his eyes no, ere I... No, no, sire, no. He was so when we took them. I... I questioned this Jairus, and he said the young one has been sightless since birth. So, even blind whelps have taken to plotting against me. Since the pleasure of removing his eyes has already been denied me, I'll have to be satisfied with the removal of his tongue. He's but a youth and innocent. Does mighty Herod fear a stripling? Silence! <clears throat> Scum of the gutter! Silence! Hold, Karen! Waste not your strength. The whip has little effect on such an ox of a man. I would offer him a more burning lesson. Have the fire brought. At once, most noble king. With fire I shall break you, brave Jairus of Ptolemaeus. I shall watch you shrivel. I shall listen to you shriek for mercy. And when I have broken you and your sightless brother, I shall hang you by your heels from the city walls as a lesson to all who would oppose the rule of Herod. Well, what is it? Why have you not done my bidding? Great Herod, the three wise men of the East whom you have been seeking await without. They come to pay homage. Hmm, excellent. Most excellent. We shall receive these kings of Chaldea and learn what they know. And what of these two, sire? Return them to the dungeons. There will be time aplenty to attend them after we have entertained our illustrious visitors. Take them back to the dungeons. Guard them well. Herod's dungeons were many and ever filled, for even though Judea was sorely oppressed, its spirit burned bright under the rags of its people. If they could not destroy Herod, they could at least put fear in his heart and make him know how deeply he was hated. And so it was that Herod's latest captive tall Jairus of Ptolemaeus and his young brother, blind Ethan, were cast into a deep, black, filth-ridden dungeon to await the king's pleasure. How goes it, Ethan? Well enough, brother. I would have given my head and gladly to keep you from this. I would be with you in all things, Jairus. It's this foul hole into which they flung us. There is no light. 
A thin, pale ray creeping in at noontide as though to tell us that the sun is really there, that the sky is blue, the air is sweet, and that the great God Jehovah watches over us. In all things we must have faith, brother. I know. But look what our faith has brought us to. Did you not say to Herod that a man can but die for what he believes? Words come easily. The saying and the doing. There is a great gulf between and it grows even wider. I am not afraid. No, Ethan, no, no, you are not afraid. You live in darkness and yet, though you are young, there is a, a lightness around you not found in others. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor, nor for, for Herod's dungeons, <laughs> nor for his torture racks, his... Who wits. are you? <laughs> what do you hear? <laughs> Who am I indeed, thou wretched son of Judea? I am Benoni of the north, and like yourself and the youth, I languish here and slowly rot. I think noble Herod has forgotten me. I was here long ere you came, and I think I'll be here long after your bones whiten under Herod's walls. We did not know there was another here. I knew. Our talking woke you. Oh, by Bezio, how knew you that boy? I heard you. Being sightless, my ears must take the place of my eyes. Ah, so. Tell me, boy. When the guard passes, can you hear his step? Clearly. You are sure? Herod's walls are thick and the floor is fashioned of stone. What matter? If Ethan says he can hear the guard, you may be sure he can, no matter how thick the walls. Listen, then. Would you dare attempt escape? If I were a bird, I would fly. When they cast me in here, I was a huge man and strong. Now I have grown weak, but not so weak that I would not take a desperate chance if it were so presented. Say on. Tonight, then, as the guard makes his rounds, the boy will listen. When the guard passes our door, we shall make an outcry as though one is doing the other to death. The guard, hearing this, there is a chance he will unbar the door and rush in to undo our mischief. We shall be ready to strike him down. Will there not be other guards? Once they came and took me out of here in the dead of night, two came for me, but there was only one guard walking the dungeon corridor. And, uh... And once out, then what? Then we can only trust to our wits and our good fortune. And almighty God. It's a chance, Benoni, and I can see no other. For as soon as Herod has done with those men of the East, we will be put to death. What men of the East are these? I know little enough. But before we were taken, I heard some talk of them in Jerusalem. They've come from a land far across the desert, seeking a king soon to be born. It has something to do with one of the old prophecies. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. <coughs> to travel so far on a fool's journey. The tribes of Israel are scattered like lost sheep, and from the remnants that dwell here in Judea, neither star nor scepter shall rise. Not all so believe. For Herod must take some stock in it, else he would not have been so anxious to greet them. Mm. Kings from the east, you say? Well, they can help us little in making our escape from this place. We must prepare for when... <laughs> As Jairus had said, Herod, whose spies had brought him word of the Magi, was most anxious to greet and question them. For Herod wanted no competition from another in his kingdom, even should it be a newborn babe. 
My court is most honored by your presence, most noble kings of the East. And we in turn, Great Herod, are also honored by your welcome. Now that you have rested and dined, perhaps you would tell us what brings you on so long a journey. We follow a star. A star? <laughs> and why follow you this star? For it will lead us to him whom we seek. And whom is it you seek, men of the East? Jairus. Yes, yes, Ethan. Should you win free, I would only slow your chances of escape. Listen, brother. I shall not escape without you, so put such thoughts from your mind. The boy is right. Hold your tongue. We're all in this together or not at all. Without Ethan, we could not even attempt freedom. He shall be our ears and I shall be his eyes. As you wish. But once free of this dungeon, we go our separate ways. Well enough, but... Uh, your place is quickly. The guard comes. Be sure to stand clear, Ethan, when he enters. You for the throat, I for his weapons. See that he makes no outcry. Be still. Now. I'll tear your throat out. I'll save Herod the trouble of killing you. I meant no. Here now, here now, you. What are you doing? There. Sleep well, Would you... you... Why did you murder him? What would you have me do? Kiss him goodnight? But we... we Enough. Could've... I have his knife and sword, and I shall have his armor, too. If you would leave here, leave now, ere I change my mind and let you keep him company. Ethan, do you hear anyone? No one comes. Then take my hand, and we shall try to make our way out of here. The Lord God shall guide our steps. Be gone! <laughs> What goes? Who attacks us? Karen! Karen, to me at once! Most, most gracious, Herod. What is it? Herod, what is it? An escape. Escape? Yes. Who escapes? Well, you witless spawn of Malach. We, we have already caught one of them, sire. One of them? How many? How many were there? Uh, three, three, three altogether, a great king. Now, by the bones of... Name them ere I cut thy head from thy worthless body. Uh, Jairus of Ptolemaeus and the blind boy, Ethan, they... They, they cannot evade your guards long, sire. Even now... A blind men, uh... boy. A blind boy. Listen to me, Jackal. Bring them both to me ere daylight. Fail me in this and you will be blind and all those on guard as well. I, it shall be done, O king. It had better be at your peril. Now go. Hold. Which of the three have you caught? The man named Benoni of the north. He was wearing the armor of the guard he'd slain. Throw him to the lions. And when you've caught the others, bring them to me. Herod's palace guards and his soldiery numbered more than ten score. Let loose upon the trail of Jairus and Ethan, they split into companies, horsemen following the roads and footmen combing the countryside. Like a large, well-organized pack of hounds, they sought out their quarry. Find the two they must, for Herod's threat was no idle jest hanging overhead. And so it was that the hunters glanced nervously from time to time toward the east, praying that the first sign of dawn would be delayed until their work was successfully accomplished. The, the hounds are in full cry. Is it safe to stay under this bridge, Jairus? It's safe for us nowhere in Judea, brother. We are out of Herod's dungeon. We can get out of his kingdom. You realize that it was a miracle we were able to win free of the palace before they knew we had gone? The Lord watches over his, Jairus. I must so believe, otherwise, tis sorcery. Are you ready to travel? We must go a long way before daylight finds us, and we must elude many who seek us. Whither do we go, brother? South. And why so? Well, that... That is a strange thing. I truly know not why. But it is a thing I know we must do, as though I had been told. Enough of talking. Come, take my hand. What? 
What is it? There are a company of footmen coming down the hill behind us. And down, down there along the road, there are horsemen. And we are caught between them? Even so. There is no hiding place here. The rocks conceal us now, but when the footmen draw closer, they will see us. It is full daylight? The sun has risen. And it is a beautiful day. A beautiful day to die. Perhaps the horsemen will ride off. They do not know we are here. They, they have stopped by a house. Some are giving their horses to drink at the stream, and some are talking with the people of the dwelling. There is no way in which we can turn. Upward to heaven, perhaps. My thoughts are ever there, Jairus. The ways of the Lord God are many and many, Jairus. We know not. Oh, hold! Do they come so soon? The horsemen. The horsemen are riding off. Suddenly, as though for no reason, they... They climbed into their saddles, and now they're riding to the east as though all the fiends in hell were snapping at their heels. And now what do we do, brother of little faith? We run from this place quickly. The footmen are in the valley to our rear. They will not see us, and we shall find out if those at the house will give us aid. <laughs> woman, we mean no harm. You are the ones they are seeking. I... Come in quickly. They were just here, but they are gone now. We... we saw them from the hill. What, what made them ride off in such haste? I know not. One moment they were standing about. Suddenly one of them shouted and pointed to the east, and then they were gone. And I say, may they ride far from this place. Come, sit. You must be weary. I shall fetch a skin of goat's milk. My lady... You are most kind. Foot soldiers will be coming soon, and... And I well, know a place to hide you well. There is danger to yourself. I have no fear of them. You are here alone? No. There is my father, who is old, and two younger sisters. They're in the courtyard preparing for the journey. Journey? Well, which way do you travel? Caesar Augustus has decreed that all must register for the tax. We go to the city of David, called Bethlehem. Jairus. I hear men approaching. Come, follow me quickly. It was good fortune that led us to you. Your name? I am Miriam, daughter of Enoch. Uh, watch your head. The foot soldiers are without, Jairus. Hurry. The steps are narrow, but... Open! Open in the name of King Herod! Because Caesar Augustus decreed it, all must go unto his city and register for the census. And so it was that all Judea rose up, and the roads were filled with those who traveled to obey Caesar's bidding. In this swarm it was that Jairus and Ethan lost themselves, and Herod's spies and soldiery could find them not. Jairus posed as the husband of Miriam, and Ethan as their son. They made the journey with the family of Enoch, and came at last upon an even tide to the city of Bethlehem. Miriam, we must bid you farewell. I would that you could stay amongst us, Jairus. I too. But we have brought you danger enough, and this is not a safe place for us. Whither will you go? Always toward the south. Into Egypt? Perhaps. And I shall never see you again. Unless the Lord so wills it. My heart cries out that he would. And mine. Know you the story of Ruth? Aye. There are words in it which I feel now. Whither thou goest, I will go. It is not to be, Miriam. Not in this time. I shall wait and pray for your return. I must go now. It is not safe to leave Ethan. A blind boy is an easy mark. God go with you, Jairus. And my heart. I leave mine with you. Farewell. What is it, Jairus? We have missed the trail in the darkness. Never have I known a night so dark. Can you see the lights of Bethlehem? Well, well enough, they're not far, but 
We cannot waste the night wandering about in these hills. Sit down, Ethan, while I look about. Ethan, there is a campfire on the hilltop ahead. Soldiers? I think not. Why would there be soldiers in these hills? Who then? I'm not sure, but I thought I saw a flock of sheep. And if so, the shepherds will know where the trail lies. Let us go to them then. Careful, we are not sure who they are or what they are. Let us go to them and make ourselves known. I shall go first. No, together. They will not harm us. Ho there, good shepherds. Who calls? What do you hear? We are travelers who have lost the trail. May we come to your fire? You may approach. Sit by the fire and warm yourself. There's bread and cheese to eat and sweet spring water to drink. We are most grateful. You travel the trail in darkness? We sought to, but lost our way. It is not safe to travel in these days after sundown. And for some, it is not safe any other time. Eat, lad, eat. I, I am somewhat weary, and I have no hunger. The trail, good shepherds, which way does it go from here? In the valley there, but half a league below, you will come on to it. It skirts the hills. Lad, you, you cannot see. I am blind. And yet your eyes shine brightly in the firelight. My sight is in what I hear, what I can smell and touch, and that which I believe. And suddenly I believe that this is not a night like others. I know not why, and yet I know it true. It fills me, and I am like one grown faint. You must lie down, Ethan. You are over-weary. Do you not feel it? It is an odd thing. But now that the lad speaks of it, I too have felt strangely this night. And our charge as though they bleat not, they sleep not. Yea, it is so. The Lord watches over us. Yea, verily. And it was said that there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the hills above, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. By the grace of God, we have seen a miracle this night. Look now where the star shines. Like a great jewel in the darkness. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judea. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So it was written long, long gone. And so it has come to pass. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see that which the Lord hath made known to us. Yea, let us go at once. I too would go. We cannot go back, Ethan. There would be danger. I shall go, brother. Danger or not. Well, then I must lead you. And trust in the glory of what we have seen here this night. <laughs> And
And so it was that the shepherds came down from the hills and sought he who had been proclaimed savior from heaven on high. And the star led them to a manger where they found him wrapped in swaddling clothes, even as the angel had said. And they knelt and worshiped the child and called him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jairus? Yes, Ethan. It's going to be a fine day. A new day, perhaps. Yes, a new day. And the sun rising off the land like a great ball of fire. What we witnessed, what we saw and heard. Ethan. Ethan, what did you say about the sun? I said it looks like a great ball of fire. And the land rolls away to meet it. And there above in the sky glides a hawk. Is it a hawk? Ethan! Ethan! Ethan, you can see! You can see! Oh, even so, Jairus. I can see. I see you and I see all things. Well, how? How? When did this miracle of miracles come about? Oh, Jairus, calm yourself, else you slip and roll down this hill. You see? My brother, who's been blind since his birth, has been given sight. Tell me, tell me quickly, what lies down there? The road. And dwellings there in the distance, is that, is that what they are? From what I could feel, I so imagined them. But when did this miracle happen? When we were outside the manger, and I knelt and gave thanks. Why did you not tell me then? At first I was stricken, speechless. Suddenly it was as though a curtain had been lifted before me. Then I did not dare speak of it for fear it was a dream, or else by speaking of it, it would end. And then later, as we made our way along the trail... I decided I would wait until the sun rose. And if I could see it, I would tell you. What wonders have come to pass in so short a time. Yea, verily. And now, Jairus, is there need for us to continue running away? Need? Herod's men seek you through me. They seek a blind boy. I am no longer blind. And if you were changed in your appearance in some way, they would not find us. No, by all that... You speak wisdom, brother. We could make our way to the house of Enoch, and with their help... Oh, Jairus. Ethan, why do you laugh? I may have been blind, but not that blind. With a wife, you will be the happier. Even so. <laughs> Ethan, we have been thrice blessed, and more than thrice blessed... Let us kneel and give thanks. And so it comes to pass that Jairus of Ptolemaeus and his young brother Ethan, who had given thanks at a lowly manger and in turn was given the gift of sight, made their way northward and came to the house of Enoch. They told, as did others, the miracles they had seen upon that night of old. And their stories have come down to us through the dust of time and shine today before all mankind as that star shone down upon Bethlehem on that night, which shall live ever in the hearts of all people who believe in Christ the Lord. This has been a special Christmas program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.